coming up on 813. And this morning, we're talking law and liberty. Confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Judge Kentonji Brown Jackson will get underway on Capitol Hill on March 21st. Judge Jackson spent the day on Wednesday meeting with congressional leaders, including Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Republican Senator Mitch McConnell. The Judiciary Committee could vote on Judge Jackson's nomination by April 8th, which could change the Supreme Court forever. Joining us this morning to weigh in on that topic and more is Justice Correspondent for the Nation, Ellie Mistal, whose debut book, Allow Me to Retort, A Black Guy's Guide to the Constitution, went on sale this week and has already sold out. So good morning to you. Congratulations on the book, uh, and thank you for being here this morning. Thank you so much. You can still get the audible, so you know it's the not the audible. There's, okay. there's always a way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that's uh, you know. Let's talk about that before we get into the book. We want to want you to weigh in on a few hot topics right now. Judge Jackson's nomination front of mind here. Do you think she'll get a fair shake in the process? You know, we see how these judicial hearings kind of play out sometimes. You know, I am not usually known for my optimism, but I do. I do think she'll get a fair shake, and I do think she'll get confirmed. But I don't think it's going to be that hard because you have to remember, Kataji Brown Jackson was confirmed by this Senate mm. in 2021 um, for the D.C. Circuit uh, Court of Appeals with 53 votes. Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, and Lindsey Graham all voted to confirm her for the, for the Court of Appeals. There, nothing's changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's not a worse judge now than she was then. And in fact, the only thing that she's done on the Court of Appeals that might change a Republican mind is that she's ruled against Trump's ridiculous schemes to hide Donald documents mm. from investigators. Mm. So if that's the reason why they don't like her all of a sudden, yeah. like that will be hard for them to defend politically as well. Yeah, that being said, the other big news coming out of Capitol Hill is uh, the federal court filing made by the House Committee investigation on the Capitol insurrection, which says there's evidence that former President Trump engaged in a criminal conspiracy. So it's now up to the Department of Justice on whether or not to file charges. So do you think that will happen? You know, it, it's everything is in Merrick Garland's court at this point, mm. right? Like the, 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 the January 6th committee has done the investigation that his FBI should have been doing, but apparently has not. They have laid it out on a silver platter for him what crimes they believe Trump has committed. They've conducted a lot of interviews. They have a lot of evidence. And now we're just waiting to see if Merrick Garland has the courage to go after the politically connected. Yeah. We understand that he's willing to go after the, 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 the low-level, you know, random January 6th in insurrectionists. He's got all kinds of smoke mm -hmm. for the QAnon right. shaman, right? But does he have the courage and the integrity to go after politically connected Republicans and Donald Trump himself who engaged in criminal activity? We haven't seen it yet. But hopefully he finds it within himself to do this work. Yeah, to be continued for sure, because that was certainly big news that kind of broke last night. I do want to get your take while we have you here, because I love your energy. On President Biden's State of the Union speech and your knowledge here behind that, there was a lot discussed in that speech, right? A lot of talk about Ukraine and sanctions and Russia and so forth. Do you think, uh, what did you think of the speech overall? And do you think it helped or hurt the Democratic Party? I think it was. A, I think I don't think it did either, right? I think okay. it was. A, it was. A, it was an even uh, 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 opportunity. I think there was a bunch of, bunch of missed opportunities. Um, he made this great uh, defense of democracy in in Europe, and made no defense of democracy in America, mm. Mm. right? He did not make the one to one connection between the authoritarians who are attacking Ukraine and the authoritarians who attacked our government just last year. I thought that was surprising that he didn't. Okay. Um, he didn't, you know, his, 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 uh, his, he said fund the police, which is interesting because I don't know that people think that the police don't have enough funding, yeah. but certainly he made no comment about what he was going to do to help police reform, which is something that has been asked for a lot, nor did he make any comment about what he was gonna do um, to help uh, uh, voting rights other than asking the Senate to pass bills yeah. that they clearly haven't passed. So yeah. I think there were some missed opportunities, but for people who like Biden, that's, that was a standard Biden, let's all uh, get together and sing Kumbaya and hold hands um, kind of speech, mm -hmm. and they'll like it. Yeah, when you talked about the economic recovery, you didn't get a whole lot of applause from the Republicans. Uh, and this, there's a lot at stake right now for Democrats heading into the midterm elections. Now, in your book, Allow Me to Retort, you reframe politics and the Constitution by kind of breaking down how it all impacts voting rights, like you mentioned, uh, LGBTQ rights, abortion rights, the list, as you know, goes on and on. So are you arguing that the Constitution needs to be scrapped altogether? 
<laughs> sure, but I don't think that's going to happen. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, if we could throw that out and, and start over with a new document that was more inclusive of everybody, that was written by everybody, at no point have black people, brown people, or women had a say in actually writing the Constitution or the amendments to that Constitution. If we could throw that out and have a delegation of all Americans to write a new one, I would be all for that. Okay. That's what they did in South Africa. You know, when they got when they got rid of apartheid, they didn't like tax some amendments onto their apartheid constitution. They threw their apartheid constitution out and they started over. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen here. Um, and so instead of that, what I'm really advocating for is that we interpret our constitution so that it so that we extend justice and fairness and equality to all as opposed to whatever the heck we do now. Right. So because you're calling it the guide. Right. So um, what are you hoping that people walk away with. You're sipping your tea right there. What's the tea you want them to dish after they read your book? I want people to care. That's yeah. like, I firmly believe that if more people understood how the law works, my book is very accessible. I take out a lot of legal jargon. I truly believe that if people understood how the law works, they would be as outraged as mm. I am about what it does and be committed to fixing it. Mm. Yeah, I think that's so the I problem. I hope they care. I yeah. hope that's the takeaway. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's the problem. People are just intimidated. Yeah. To mm -hmm. figure it all out, right? Well, lawyers like to use a lot of jargon because using jargon makes lawyers sound smart. If I come up here and say, well, you know, the strict scrutiny requirements of the section 1417A, B, A, right. and F. Yeah, over uh, my head. I sound like I, I've, I've had a lot of education, right? But nobody understood what I just said, right. right? So the real smart thing to do is to take these concepts, not dumb them down, mm -hmm. but explain them plainly because I think that the. Love normal that. people, normal literate people can understand the law. The law is not rocket Gosh. science, okay? I, always I do that. not know how to send a rocket to Mars and have it land just so, with it. like, I can't do that, right. right? But I can figure out whether or not I should have a right to vote or not. That's not complicated. Fundamental. And you just have to explain that better to people. And meet people where they're at. That's what I always say, meet people where they're at so that they will care. Gosh, I love your energy. I'm a huge fan. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I hope we have you back. Um, and you can order a copy of the Allow Me to Retort, A Black Man's Guide to the Constitution, wherever books are sold. It is sold out, but you heard him say, get the audible. Yep, Ellie Mistal. He's the best.